Welcome to the third module of our Love 2D game tutorial. In this part, we are focusing on creating and managing food items in the game world. We start by creating a new module called Food. Inside it, we define a table called Food List. This table holds all the food items that our player will collect during gameplay. Each food item is represented as a small circle with an X and Y coordinate that places it on the screen and a radius that controls its size. In this example, the radius is set to 10 for every item. The food is laid out in a grid, four columns and three rows. The X values, like 190, 350, 510, and 670, control the horizontal spacing, and the Y values, like 120, 180, and 240, control the vertical placement. This layout makes sure the food appears in consistent and predictable locations, making it easy for the player character to move through them, collect points, and interact with the game world. Now let us look at the is eaten function inside the food module. This function checks whether the player has eaten any of the food items. It takes three inputs, the player's X position, the Y position, and the player's radius, which we will call Pac-Man's radius, since this works just like a Pac-Man style game. The function goes through every food item in the list using a for loop. For each one, it calculates the distance between the player and the food using the Pythagorean theorem that is the square root of the difference in x squared plus the difference in y squared.
If that distance is less than or equal to the player's radius, that means the player is touching the food. In that case, the food is removed from the list using table remove and the function returns true, meaning, yes, food was eaten. If none of the food items are close enough, the function finishes and returns false, meaning no food was eaten this time. Now, we have a helper function called getColorChange. This function is not part of the food object directly, but it helps control how the food looks when it is drawn. Inside the function, we call loveTimerGetTime function. This gives us the total time in seconds since the game started running. We store that in a variable called time. We will use this time value to animate the color of the food, making it pulse or glow as time passes, creating a nice visual effect that makes the food stand out on screen. After getting the time, we define the base color. In this case, red is set to 1, green is also 1, and blue is 0. That gives us a bright yellow color when mixed, since red and green make yellow in RGB. We create a variable called intensity. This is where the magic happens. We take the sign of the time, multiplied by 0 0.5, which slows down the wave, then take the absolute value, so it stays positive. We multiply that result by 0 0.4 and add 0 0.6 to keep the color from getting too dim. This makes the brightness gently pulse between 0 0.6 and 1 over time, kind of like a glowing or breathing effect. Finally, the function returns the red, green, and blue values each multiplied by this intensity. This lets the food change brightness over time, giving it a nice animated look when we draw it on screen. Now we move on to the draw function in the food module. This is where all the food items are drawn on the screen using Love2D's graphics system. We start by looping through each food item in the list with a for loop. Each item is stored in a variable called f, which gives us access to its x and y coordinates and radius. Inside the loop, we call getColorChange to get a color that changes over time. This gives us the red, green, and blue values needed to set the drawing color for each food item. Now that we have the color, we use LoveGraphicsSetColor to set the color for drawing. This tells Love2D to use the red, green, and blue values that change over time, making the food pulse or glow. Next, we use Love Graphics Circle to actually draw the food on the screen. The circle function creates a circle shape. The fill part means we are drawing a solid circle, not just the outline. We pass in the X and Y positions of the food and the radius, which makes sure the circle is the right size and in the correct location. 
To add a simple shading effect, we draw a second, slightly smaller circle on top of the first one. But first, we change the color again. We call Love Graphics Set Color and multiply the red, green, and blue values by 0 0.3. This gives us a darker version of the same glowing color we used before, so it looks like a shadow or highlight. Then, we draw another filled circle, but this time, we offset its position, just a little, by adding one-fourth of the radius to the x and y coordinates. We also make this circle slightly smaller by multiplying the radius by 0 0.8. This creates a subtle, stylish layered effect that makes the food look more three-dimensional and alive. Finally, we end the loop and the function and return the food module so it can be used in the rest of the game.